still the starry night above How still the earth below How small the greatest gift of love The world has ever known The fullness of the deity A bar of manger fills The God of all eternity Beneath the bed Good morning, welcome to our carols, or good day, welcome to our carols, for the time you're watching it. This year we're conscious that many people are still very scared of COVID, and so we decided to do a short service of readings and carols, so as to help you reflect on the message of Christmas. Let's start with the bidding prayer. Beloved in Christ, be this Christmas time our care and our delight to hear again the message of the angels and in heart and mind to go even unto Bethlehem, to see this thing which has come to pass, and the babe lying in a manger. Therefore let us read and mark in Holy Scripture the tale of the loving purposes of God, from the first days of our disobedience to the glorious redemption brought us in this holy child. We take a moment to hear our first carol. And 
Our first reading is from Genesis chapter 3, verses 8 on onwards. Then the man and his wife heard the sound of the Lord God as he was walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And they hid from the Lord God among the trees of the garden. But the Lord God called to the man, Where are you? And he answered, I heard you in the garden and I was afraid because I was naked, so I hid. And he said, Who told you you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree from which I commanded you not to eat? The man said, The woman you put here with me, she gave me some fruit from the tree and I ate it. Then the Lord God said to the woman, What is this you have done? And the woman said, The serpent deceived me and I ate. So the Lord God said to the serpent, Because you have done this, cursed are you above all the livestock and all the wild animals. You will crawl on your belly and you will eat dirt all the days of your life. And I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between you and the offspring of hers. And he will crush your head and you will strike his heel. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. stars and lit the sun did you know this child you hold is the lord from ages old mary can you see the light shining in the dark of night sing out in praise the joy of all the earth sing out in
The second reading is taken from Isaiah chapter 11. A shoot shall come from the stump of Jesse, from his root a branch will bear fruit. The spirit of the Lord will rest on him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and of power, the spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. And he will delight in the fear of the Lord. He will not judge by what he sees with his eyes or decide by what he hears with his ears, but with righteousness he will judge the needy. With justice he will give decision to the poor of the earth. He will strike the earth with the rod of his mouth, and with the breath of his lips he will destroy the wicked. Righteousness shall be his belt, and faithfulness shall sash around his waist. The wolf will lie with the lamb, and the leopard will lie down with the goat. The calf and the lion will in the yearling together, and the little child will lead them. The cow will feel, feed with the bear, the young will be daunted down together. The lion shall eat straw like the ox, and the infant will play near the hole of the cobra, and the young child shall put his hand in the viper's nest. There will be neither harm nor do, they will neither harm nor destroy on my holy mountain. For the earth will be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. In the day of the root of Jesse, he will stand as a banner for the peoples. The nations will rally to him and his place of rest will be glorious. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let earth receive her King. Let every heart prepare Him room. And heaven and nature sing. And heaven and nature sing. And heaven and heaven and nature sing. Third reading is from Luke's Gospel 
and it starts at the beginning of chapter 2. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken in the entire Roman world. This was the first census take that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria, and everyone went to his hometown to register. So Joseph went up with, to his town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to, be, to, to marry him, and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came and the babe was born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son, and she wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger, because there was no room in the inn. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks by night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them. And they were terrified, but the angel said to them, Don't be afraid, I bring you good news of great joy. There will be for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Saviour has been born to you. He is Christ, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find the baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angels, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and peace on earth to men on whom his favour rests. And the angels, when the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing which has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the, and the baby, who was lying in a manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told to them about the child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Beyond the hills of Bethlehem, the angel choir sings, a joyful chorus fills the sky. A savior in a manger The promise of a coming king The hope of all the earth To dwell within our broken world The savior in Sure.
Let's take a moment to reflect on that reading from the book of Isaiah. Heavenly Father, as we come to this reading, we ask you to open it to us in Jesus' name. Amen. We need peace this Christmas more than ever, don't we? We need peace in our world, which is riven by war. We've only got to look at the pictures we see from Yemen and from so many other places. We know what's going on in Nigeria. But we need peace in the UK. We need a different sort of peace. We need peace of mind because we're troubled. The scientists are telling us that COVID can only get worse, that the dangers of the Omicron variant will challenge the NHS. We're all living on the edge of what it's possible to cope with. This is stress and anxiety and emotional turmoil like we've never, many of us have never experienced before. Now, I'm not suggesting that as we get peace, we escape the challenges that life brings. Peace won't make the difficulties disappear. But peace is important because when you remain calm in the face of distress, anxiety, worry and being overwhelmed seem to be less likely to happen. Without peace of mind, you might even begin to notice symptoms. People have noticed them during lockdown. Sleep has gone uh, to pot, it's been disturbed. Aches and pains have seemed to occur, more than those we get when we're getting older. People have shown fatigue and low, low energy, stomach distress, anger, irritability, difficulty concentrating, relational tension or conflict. There have been more domestic violence incidents during lockdown than uh, we've seen for years. There have been more uh, stress in marriages and between parents and children. So what we see in verse 1 is a devastated world. We see a world where the trees have been literally felled and are flattened. Everything's been swept away like a tornado's ripped through a forest. And yet from the stump of one of these devastated trees, we're told that there will be a shoot growing. It becomes a branch and then the branch bears fruit. And the fruit it bears will renew the world, will change the world radically. Isaiah's thinking of a little boy, born in obscurity more than 2,000 years ago, with no status but lineage into a fallen ancient dynasty. And yet he's the only one who can bring that peace. But the Messiah that Isaiah's talking about doesn't need to worry about his royal lineage as much because it's not a very proud lineage. Ahaz, the son of David, was spiritually bankrupt. Jesus has a different lineage, a God lineage, and is anointed by the Holy Spirit. In verses 1 to 5, we see what Jesus will do to make himself a leader fit to bring peace to the earth. And in 6 to 9, we see what that peace will look like. So in verse 2, we see this opening of this section looking at Jesus as leader. Now, he's not like Boris. Who could be like Boris? He's not a leader who speaks great oratory like Churchill. He's, he's a man of grace. He doesn't have a first from Oxford. One of the great commentators wrote these words. Jesus doesn't need our mechanisms for power. He has another way to build a world of our dreams. He has the spirit of wisdom and understanding for leadership, the spirit of counsel and might for war, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord for holiness. And like every other human leader in the sorry length of our history, Jesus is literally the best qualified to rule the world. We have nothing to fear from him. We are foolish to resist him. We can never be too loyal to him. Please note, he's what we need as a leader. Because as it goes on to say in the reading, he'll never be conned. You can never con Jesus because he will never judge by what he sees or what he hears. He knows our hearts. And he will be a true power for justice. The reading tells us that he will correct the massive wrongs that we've been forced to accept. He will not step on the little people in achieving his goal and he will bring the wicked to justice. Verse 5 says he doesn't need the trappings of power, the jag, the armed guards, the mansion. 
He doesn't need to be seen as powerful in that way. He is righteous and faithful, which means everything that flows from him is morally right. He is coming to issue usher in a new age. Now, nature and humanity will be revealed in a new way. Now, we all like to try and create this utopian view in our own way. We do it in our homes and our families. We will do it over Christmas when we will set up the Christmas tree and create our own little utopia around the presents. But our utopias are often flawed. In San Francisco in 1967, it seemed idyllic, but only for five minutes before the following famous flyer was distributed. Pretty little 16 year old middle class chick comes to the height to see what it's all about and gets picked up by a 17 year old street dealer who spends all day shooting her full of speed again and again. Then he feeds her 3000 mics and raffles her off to a temporary unemployed body for the biggest high street gang bang since the night before last. The poly politics and ethics of ecstasy. The 3000 mile mics, they are micrograms of LSD and they represent 12 times the normal dose. I still know people who took such voyages of imagination or had them inflicted upon themselves who never quite came back. We like to think of the 60s summer of love as this utopian time of freedom, freedom to have sex with who we want and to take whatever drugs we want. But here's the story of a young girl who's traded and abused in that utopian image. Every revolution, I'm afraid to say, is social, technological and scientific and economic has promised us liberation and instead has oppressed us. But if we bow to the rule of Jesus, he will lead us into everything safe and pleasant. There's no dark side, no false laughter, no guilty conscience, no unheated, unhealed wounds. Look at the images of the reading, the wolf and the lamb, who generally are at enmity because of their need to destroy one another for food, will survive and be at peace. The wild and the domesticated will be led by the innocent and the venerable. There will be no fear. Nature and man will not be at odds anymore. His kingdom is the only kingdom that can give a long-listing answer to poverty, hunger, injustice, illiteracy and all the other sorrows that we as men and women have created through our sinful lives. I know that real deep down peace both of body and of soul. I know that there are times when I'm anxious, but I can call upon the Lord because I know there's somebody competent in charge. Isn't that the thing that's been taking up the newspapers for the last few weeks? Is Boris competent? That's what uh, Keir Starmer keeps telling us. He's not competent to run the country. Well, I'm telling you about somebody who's competent to run the world forever and ever. What can we do? How can we make it happen? Well, start living under God's leadership. Start living by God's moral values. Let Jesus be your leader and you will know true peace. Apart from Christ, there can be no peace. I've seen the side effects of peace. Now, I'm not claiming to be perfect because I, if you ask my family, I'm still a grumpy old man and I'm still known, uh, hopefully jokingly, as the Grinch who stole Christmas. But... I've been better at hiding, handling daily life when I've trusted the Lord. I've known patience and tolerance. I've known what it is to pray for the person who burgled the church. I know I can give my stresses and anxieties and worries to God in prayer. And the person I'm giving them to can handle them. I have a sense of inner happiness. I fall asleep easily at night. I know I snore too much, but I fall asleep easily at night. And I'm not so easily affected when people say bad things about me. Because my value rests in Jesus Christ. I'm less restless in my thinking. I'm less likely to be swayed and agitated by events, problems and difficulties. And I seem to have clearer judgment about certain situations. Do you want the ultimate gift this Christmas? Do you want to know peace? 
Do you want that peace of mind which we're all longing for? Then please in your heart say this prayer with me. Jesus, I believe you're the Son of God, that you died on the cross to rescue me from my sin, from death, and to restore me, restore me to the Father. Father, this morning, here and now, I choose to turn from my sins, my self-consciousness, my self-centeredness, and every part of my life that does not please you. I choose you. I give myself to you. I receive your forgiveness and ask you to take your rightful place in my life as my Saviour and my Lord. Come reign in my heart. Fill me with your love and your life. Help me to become a person who is truly loving, a person like you. Restore me, Jesus. Live in me. Love through me. Thank you, God. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Now, if you prayed that prayer, please get in touch with me and tell me you prayed that prayer. And then we can do something about it. Let's just listen to a piece of music now as we reflect. From the chaos of darkness, your word shaped the earth, and your image a people made. But we traded perfection, truth for a lie, and your glory was veiled in shame. But a promise made, a blessing you gave. To a people of your name For this broken world A saviour foretold To bear all our grief and pain When the heavenly sea Descended his throne, all my sin on his shoulders lay. And to win our redemption, he suffered and died for the sake of my guilt and shame. All the price he paid in taking my place, so that death was all.
Now let us hear our next reading. Glorious reading from 1 John. From John 1, sorry. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him were all things made. Without him nothing was made that was made. In him was life, and that life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, but the darkness has not understood it. There came a man who was sent from God. His name was John. He came as a witness to testify concerning the light, so that through him all men might believe. He himself was not the light. He came only as a witness to the light. The light that was, gives light to every man was coming into the world. He was in the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognise him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet all who received him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision, nor of a husband's will, but born of God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Oh, come, oh, ye faithful, joyful and triumphant. Oh, come, ye, oh, come, ye to Come and behold him, born the King of angels. Oh, come, let us adore him. Oh, come, let us adore him. Oh, come, let us adore he in Christ the Lord. of light eternal though he abhors not the virgin son of the father begotten not created oh come let us adore him oh come let us adore him oh come Adore him, oh come let 
Let's close by praying together. He who was born of the Virgin Mary, revealed in his glory, worshipped by the angels, proclaimed among the nations, believed in throughout the world, exalted to the highest heavens. Glory to God in the highest, and peace on his, to his people on earth. May he who has by his incarnation gathered into one all things earthly and heavenly, bestow upon us the fullness of inward peace and goodwill. And may the blessing of God the Father, God the Son and God the Holy Spirit be with each and every one of us and with all those whom we love this Christmas tide and forevermore. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord in the name of Christ. I and everybody at St Mary's would like to wish you a happy and blessed Christmas. God bless.